when we expect the robo taxis to hit the U.S. and Boston, no less. Not the easiest street to drive in when you're even gripping the steering wheel. Newtonomy CEO Carl Yanyama is joining me live exclusively for today's Fox Business Tech Minute. Uh, Dr. Yanyama, this is incredible. How's testing going first? It's great. We just got our first cars in the country the other day. We've been making maps and getting ready to take our first autonomous drives in the very near future in Boston. What initial problems did you first find out as you tested these in Singapore that, that you had to work out? Because we'd love to hear, you know, the glitches and things like that. Well, there's always glitches. And, uh, you know, the most difficult thing is that even if you can program a car to follow the rules of the road, sometimes, you know, human drivers have other ideas. And so these cars have to be intelligent enough to adapt to the way that you and I drive. And that's technically very hard, but we're making a lot of progress toward making these robot cars drive less like robots and more like people. Well, I, I find it fascinating because I've driven in Boston and mm, trying to zoom around downtown crossing. I mean, I'd be amazed if this will work. Is it going to work? I mean, what are your hopes and dreams for this fleet as you actually jump ahead of organizations like Uber and, and Alphabet's Google because they're trying to do the same thing? Yeah, you know, first of all, Boston's a great city to be testing in. It's a historic city. It's got a complex road network. We know that if we can drive well in Boston, we can drive well anywhere. And we welcome True. competition <laughs> from other companies, you know, large and small. This is a global opportunity. There's lots of room for many players. And we know that we've got a great path to success in autonomy. So the cars that you're using are the Renault, is it Zoe or Zoe? The Renault Zoe, it's okay. an electric vehicle. All right, so you're, mm -hmm. you're out there in front of the Fords of the world, the BMWs. I know Lexus has been outfitted a couple of times. Uh, what's your dream? Do you sit there at night and think, I'm gonna beat those guys, I'm gonna beat those guys? Well, we've got a great start in Singapore. We're on the road here in Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, within the coming months, we'll be announcing a few other partnerships in other parts of the world. You know, we're focused on getting to market early in some of the key markets worldwide that are interested in putting these autonomous cars on the road. At some point, are we all going to be in these robot taxis? And, and I mean, I, I hear, oh, in 15, 20 years, nobody's gonna have their own car. I like driving. And you'll be able to drive. You know, this will be a choice. And these robot cars, when we get the technology exactly right, they'll be cheaper, they'll be safer, and they'll be more efficient mm -hmm. than today's manually driven fleets. That's really the promise of the technology. But sure, if you want to drive your own car in the future, no one's going to stop you. It'll just be a little bit more expensive and maybe a little bit more dangerous. Yeah, because you're going to ruin the whole psychology of Los Angeles. I'm from L.A. And you, know, you go to a Laker game, doctor, and nobody asks, where'd you sit? They say, where'd you park? Because that's all anybody cares about. How fast but wouldn't it be there. cool not to have to park at all and pull <laughs> yeah. up in a driverless car? <laughs> you well, look pretty good. We applaud you and the gang at MIT. Congratulations and, and uh, uh, good luck maneuvering around um, the North End in Boston. We